massive rocket fire right now into southern Israel. You can hear the explosions overhead. Hamas has launched a huge barrage. One of those rockets just fired from the Gaza Strip slammed into a house behind me. Some secondary explosions taking place. Many things on fire. We can see debris on the road. It is chaos here, but just an example of what is taking place in southern Israel. That is Trey Yinkst with Fox News, who was at that time reporting live from the war against Israel by the troglodytes, which reminded Michael and I this morning that nobody is covering the war in Ukraine. Every now and then somebody says, oh, you don't support the war in Ukraine? I support the war in Ukraine. And that's the whole, that's it. There are no news media in Ukraine covering war. When's the last time you saw blood on television in Ukraine? Last time you heard uh, an AK-47 rifle popping or a rocket or a missile hitting. You know, Joe Biden sent him cluster munitions because he's cluster Joe and depleted uranium munitions for uh, blowing up Russian or, uh, you know, armored pieces and and so on, tanks and things. And uh, uh, Trey Yingst, he's in it. And uh, I say he looks a little freaked out, and that's understandable. He's in the middle of a firefight there because the troglodytes are after civilization and Iran is behind it, and Joe Biden and Barack Obama are the primary funders of the Ayatollahs in Iran. Uh, And also, Joe Biden reversed President Trump's decision to not send hundreds of millions of our dollars to the Palestinians. And he, Joe Biden, sent hundreds of millions of our dollars to the Palestinians, and now they're using those dollars to attack Israel and try to exterminate the entire Jewish population of the planet Earth and certainly of Israel. And Iran has the same stated goal to wipe Israel from the map. And uh, Democrats on Capitol Hill have the same goal because they're not on the side of civilization. They're not on our side. They are not the good guys. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And, you know, I mean, again, Rashida Tlaib has a world map. Democrat Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has a world map in her office. And, of course, as you might imagine, Israel is on the world map. But she covered up Israel with a a Post-it note and wrote Palestine in red letters appropriately because she is an anti-American radical and an extremist. You know, Joe Biden loves to call everybody that has an American flag in their front yard an extremist and trying to destroy democracy when, in fact, trying to save it. That's your Democrat Party. And the the Democrats marching in the streets of Washington, marching in the streets of New York, marching in the streets of Los Angeles, marching in the streets of Atlanta in favor of the troglodytes who are murdering as many children as they can. The Democrats. Iran State TV it has declared the attack to be a, quote, heroic fight heroic fight, and they're chanting death to Israel in the Iranian parliament, in the parliament, you know, their Congress, they're chanting death to Israel and uh, Iranian state TV, which is kind of like MSNBC in the United States or a CNN in the United States, calling it a heroic fight. Honestly, the violent mobs in the streets of New York and Los Angeles, the streets of D.C., and Atlanta, where they are for the genocide of the Jews. Resistance is justified. The people are occupied. The people are occupied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to go down to the White House for the, I caught wind of it, and I wanted to head down there, and I was just entangled in a whole bunch of things, and I tried to get down late in the afternoon, but I was told it was over by then. Mm, 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 mm. I'm telling you, your Democrat party. By the way, little throwaway here, but kind of a big deal potentially for you. Um, 23andMe, you know 23andMe, where you send in your whatever and they uh, 
tell you what your ancestors looked like or something like that. I've never done it myself. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure what I am, and, and I don't care beyond that. 23andMe says it is confirming suspected leak of sensitive user data. That's right, 23andMe, all your genetic information, uh, hacked and lost lots of uh, data. Genetic, genetic testing company 23andMe said on Friday it believes that some of its users' data was compromised in a in a, uh, cred- uh, a credential stuffing attack. That's what it is, a credential stuffing attack. That's uh, being circulated on the dark web on a hacking forum. So they're hacked, and 23andMe, you know, the Chinese have it, no doubt, and whoever uh, wants to. Also, you know, this Ozempic stuff that uh, so many people are taking, little injections for weight loss things. Ozempic and another one called Wigovi. I'm going to call it Wigovi may be linked to stomach paralysis and other digestive issues, a large-scale study says. Sure, naturally. Mm -hmm. And in Chicago, Illinois, uh, Chicago homicides in uh, uh, 2023, um, the numbers are off the charts, completely crazy. The Chicago Tribune has the story. And um, pinging with my friend uh, Vinny D in Chicago, and there was another mass shooting in Chicago where, what is it, eight people shot in a single shooting? Is that, uh, is that what it is? Eight people shot in a single shooting. And I think four of them critically because, you know, the city's full of Democrats. River North shooting, eight injured, four critically after gunfire erupts during fight near nightclub. Probably shouldn't go to that nightclub anymore. That nightclub might be no good. You know, the police would like to enforce the laws, but the Democrats prefer murder to peace and quiet. They really do. River North neighborhood on edge again after eight people were left wounded when gunfire erupted early Sunday morning. That's to say late Saturday night. Eight people shot, 2.30 a.m. West Erie Street, North Orleans Street around 2.30 a.m., and that's uh, normal in Chicago. Don't don't ask any questions, racist. What's the matter with you, you're racist? That's your Democrat Party, honestly. Very, very unwell, very unwell. Every Democrat city is a war zone, and nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody's even talking about it. All right, let's get back to uh, audio because there were some very, very good people on the television yesterday and today, for that matter. The uh, Israeli ambassador to the United Nations yesterday, uh, Gilad Erdan, and um, he's talking about what's going on in Israel, as our caller Stephen was earlier, calling from Jerusalem. And uh, here is the Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. He was at the United Nations yesterday speaking. Ruthless terrorists gunned down innocent Israeli civilians in the streets, murdering anything that moved anything anything and again this craziest thing this music festival where they came flying in on ultralights murdering people 260 people murdered at a music festival an outdoor music festival nice time of year there good weather there and the mass murderers came in from above 260 people murdered at the music festival, which reminds us of the uh, massacre at Las Vegas at a country music festival. And I think it was Jason Aldean, wasn't it? And from a uh, hotel uh, casino. And the FBI just can't tell. Nobody knows. He might have been angry with a casino or something or country music, uh, you know, uh, Trump voters. Something like that. Here is Ambassador Erdogan. Just look at this photo of bodies of women strewn, strewn in the street, in a bus stop. Innocents murdered in cold blood. Massacred women, a group of women at a bus stop, and the troglodytes gunned them all down, murdered them all, uh, an, an enormous amount of blood, and just women, just women. They might have stolen children if there were children there because they're doing that too. This is what nuclear weapons were made for. Well, it's not a perfect target, but, you know, we can talk. 
Uh, Ambassador Erdogan. These animal-like terrorists broke into homes, gathered entire families into rooms, and shot them point blank as if they were stomping on, on insects. These animal-like savages. They are animal-like savages. And really there is no, there is only one thing to do with people like this, and that is to shoot them and kill them or to drop bombs on them and kill them. There is no discussing. I don't you know, bring them to Guantanamo or put them in jail. Uh, these are savages, and they must be killed. Ambassador Erdogan. Grandparents and the elderly, among them Holocaust survivors who endured the Nazis, were violently dragged from their homes, this time by Hamas, and taken into Gaza. Uh, and the funding from Joe Biden, one point. $2 billion per hostage to Iran, and now, surprise, surprise, new American hostages days later. You don't have to be a genius to be able to predict this stuff, Ambassador Erdogan. This mother is crying as she clutches her two precious babies before being put on a truck to Gaza. They're kidnapping mothers These and children. Are war crimes. Blatant documented war crimes. But tragically, the abominations don't end here. No, they don't. Ambassador Erdogan. Hamas terrorists happened upon an outdoor party of hundreds of young Israelis celebrating the holiday weekend. A concert. These savages gunned down Jewish revelers just like Nazi death squads in the 1940s. Hundreds, hundreds were butchered their bodies mutilated and defiled. And those who survived were taken to Gaza. Um, you know, there is no level of ruthlessness that can match this, but civilization is going to have to try to match the level of ruth ruthlessness to destroy these people, to kill these people. It's the only option. What we are witnessing are war crimes, blatant, barbaric war crimes, slaughtering civilians, abusing hostages, taking babies from their, ruth from their mothers. There are no words to describe such savagery. Uh, the, the, the Nazi death squads, and again, never a massacre like this, and he was talking about the music festival where 260 people were murdered and untold numbers kidnapped and taken to the Gaza to be tortured, to be raped, to be murdered, to be held as hostages because these savages, and that is a polite word to describe these vicious, blood-drenched ghouls from hell, these troglodytes, uh, Ambassador Erdogan, how is Israel responding? This is Israel's 9-11. This is Israel's 9-11. And Israel will do everything to bring our sons and daughters back home. It's a bloodbath now, and it's going to continue to be a bloodbath for the foreseeable future because the troglodytes from an unholy hell have unleashed the wrath of evil on Israel, and there is nothing too brutal when it comes to responding. Hey, the Democrat, let's just make peace with Hamas, which we've already done, by the way, given them their own stretch territory. You know, they turn the beach into a, a graveyard. They, uh, they turn what should be a, a beautiful, wonderful place, just like it is 20 feet up the beach when you get to Israel and everybody's on the beach with umbrellas, having cocktails and bikinis, having a great time. Then you take uh, a walk 20 feet to the south and they murder you and cut your head off and put it on a pike. Ambassador Erdogan. I don't remember anyone talking about achieving a peace agreement with Al-Qaeda or, uh, or with uh, ISIS. Peace cannot be achieved with uh, an organization that its sole only goal is to destroy you and to butcher each and every one of your citizens and to uh, flatten your country and drive every single person like you uh, into the sea by killing you. 
You know, President Biden has a sinister plan to introduce the digital dollar. It's already underway in the United States. And it's very important to understand the consequences of this scheme by the left. Because contrary to their claims, of course, this is not in your best interest or mine or anyone's best interest unless you're an authoritarian. Time is of the essence, and getting smart now to protect yourself, your savings, your retirement, a very good idea. You can help protect your savings from the risks of this digital dollar scheme by diversifying your money with IRAs in gold and silver. You get started by calling the experts at American Alternative Assets. Call them today at 888-4-GOLD-20, 888-446-5320. They'll give you all the guidance you need on safeguarding your retirement savings. Say no to Joe Biden's digital dollar. Call 888-4-GOLD-20. Individual results may vary. There is no guarantee that past performance of gold and silver will be indicative of future results. Seek your own legal tax investment and financial advice before opening an account. Um... You know, and thankfully, Benjamin Netanyahu is the prime minister there because he's an old commando himself. His brother was a commando murdered by the troglodytes years ago. And he is the right man for the job. No mercy, no prisoners. Kill them all. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Book by this July 31st for extra savings. Visit chrisplantcruise.com. You know, it was uh, Stonewall Jackson, uh, what was it, Fredericksburg, I think, that Stonewall Jackson, the Confederate general, uh, Fredericksburg, um, fighting the Yankees, you know, and, and the battle was winding down and Stonewall Jackson yelled, kill them, kill them all. And I think we might be, uh, looking at a Fredericksburg situation here in the Gaza because, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is not going to sit still for all of this. I'm quite sure, nor nor should he. Now, just recently, September 19th of 2023, the headline was, Outrage as Iran President Prepares to Address UN, quote, wants to kill American citizens. Senator Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, co-sponsored bill to ban the Iranian President Raisi from the United United Nations and coming to speak at the at the United Nations, you know, the Green Wall, the whole thing, um, great honor. And the Wall Street Journal reporting today that Iran helped plan attack on Israel, gave green light last week. And the Wall Street Journal has all kinds of details about meetings in Beirut and more coming up. Now, I realize that a lot of people have the day off today because it's a national holiday, a federal holiday, a government holiday, a bank holiday. It's Columbus Day. But the Democrats hate America, and they hate America's founding. They hate almost everything, don't they? I don't know where they get uh, the vim for all of that hatred, but they find it somewhere. They hate Christopher Columbus because he was an extremely brave, smart European and Italian, funded by the Queen of Spain, Isabella, to sail on a ship off the edge of the planet Earth. You know, I learned when we were in Spain uh, over the summertime on our sea cruise that the uh, rumor at the time was that Queen Isabella and Christopher Columbus were having an affair. Did you know that? It was like this. It's like that. They, they, uh, and they were apparently, and then she said, if I give you a bunch of money, will you go sail off the edge of the earth? And he said, yeah, sure. So uh, he uh, bravely went uh, forth, and my friend Patrice Anwuka was on WMAL this morning 
talking about she's from the Caribbean and she's talking about how Christopher Columbus came to uh, on one of his trips to to her island and um, and that uh, next door the uh, the tribe next door they were terrible cannibals terrible cannibals there was a lot of cannibalism back then Democrats like cannibalism you know they're kind of like Jeffrey Dahmer uh, but there are more of them they're, uh, they're n- today is Columbus Day. The Democrats like to call it Indigenous Peoples Day. Is that what they call it? Indigenous Peoples. Isn't people already the plural of person? But then they have people, and then they have peoples. They got peoples. And um, the Democrats. So today, in order to observe uh, appropriately and properly Indigenous Peoples Day, a lot of Democrats are uh, sitting on the ground um, with no shoes uh, not using electricity or running water or any written language, you know, to uh, appreciate. And then maybe some cannibalism and child human sacrifices, which they already do, don't they? They do child human sacrifices. They, it's Planned Parenthood. Tens of millions of child human sacrifices in the name of whatever. They, uh, you know, they're Democrats. They harvest the organs, though. So they got that going. Kind of like... Uh, you know, the Mayans, the Incans. Sure. You know, when the Europeans came over, they found a lot of funny stuff. They didn't find St. Peter's Basilica. Skyscrapers, airplanes. They didn't find it. Big ships. They found it. No, no, none of that. Written language. They find it. No, no. What are the great texts? Indigenous Peoples Day, but not Christopher Columbus. They're very hostile toward Europe, Europeans, uh, discovery, Founders, they'd prefer that all of the Americas just be like wild animal parks that they could visit in their yachts and look at the funny people with no shoes and loincloths and no electricity because the left, they're worse than the Islamists. Mm-mm-mm. And we're in the District of Columbia, of course, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. You know who that's named for? Cristobal Colombo, that's who is Colombo. You know, but they want to tear down his statue on Central Park South in front of CNN Center. They want to tear it down because they're anti-Western and they're basically the Taliban on LSD. I don't think the Taliban does LSD, but I'm pretty sure the Democrats are still microdosing at least a lot of LSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the left, they they renamed it. It's not Columbus Day anymore because they're anti-European. They're anti-founding fathers. They're against the founding of the United States of America. And honestly, they they to them, if it were like the San Diego uh, Wild Animal Park, you know, the big San Diego Zoo and the Wild Animal Park, that's what they would want for the people of the Americas. And the child human sacrifices would... Would still be going on in the old school way. No, it's going on in the new school way, the Democrat way. They're fairly barbaric on a whole lot of levels, too. And you got all these Democrat members of Congress that are pro terrorism. They should be expelled from the Congress just for openers. Rashida Tlaib, Cory Bush should be expelled from the Congress because they're demented. So, in any case, happy Columbus Day. Thank God for Christopher Columbus, a great, proud American. One of my best girl, and it was a sea cruise again. We were in uh, Spain. We visited the tomb of Christopher Columbus. And there were no lefties throwing blood on it like lefties do here. We might have missed the action, though. I can't say for sure. Happy Columbus Day. And on Columbus Day, you know, you can get your Remember Normal baseball cap, your Remember Normal t-shirts, your Remember Normal coffee mugs at the Chris Plant store on Al Gore's amazing internet because the West is the best, as Jim Morrison famously sang with the Doors and as the Proud Boys like to say, the West is the best. That's what makes them villains to the left. See, they don't loot, they don't burn for Proud Boys came to Washington and they, where they were stabbed. One of them was a, a woman, but never mind that. That's okay. And since we're talking about Democrats and their many, many mental illnesses, and boy, they're suffering from a lot of mental illnesses, they don't know how many genders there are. In San Francisco, there are more than 130 genders to choose from. There are two genders, just for the record. Male and female, XX chromosomes, XY chromosomes. In fact, tomorrow is XX. October 10th, Roman numerals XX, the XX chromosome indicates 
female of the species, the Democrats reject science, and they're coming for your children. They're like our version of Hamas. They really are. But speaking of uh, Democrats, here's the uh, story from uh, San Francisco, SFGate. Bay Area Restaurants Institute Penalty for Brunch Vomiters. Now, this is Mel Brooks. This is uh, History of the World, Part 1. This is uh, the court of Caligula at the end of the Roman Empire. There are so many Democrats in San Francisco going to Sunday brunch, and it's a bottomless brunch. So you can eat as much as you want all day, and you can drink you know, mimosas or whatever, as many as you want. And what they've discovered is the Democrats are coming in, they're eating until their bellies bulge and they're bloated, then they go to the vomitorium, just like the fall of the Roman Empire. And they vomit out their brunch, and then they dab their chins with a napkin, they go back to the buffet, they continue engorging themselves again, and chugging the mimosas, then they go vomit again and come back for more because they're the left. They're not liberals. They're the left. They're insane, and they are the fall of the Roman Empire. So SF Gate. Bay Area Restaurants Institute penalty for brunch vomiters. There is a Mel Brooks uh, moment in the uh, history of the world. Part one, uh, reports are that he is now working on History of the World Part Two. Is he a hundred? He's almost a hundred. But he's the greatest comedy voice of the 20th century. There is a reason we revere brunch, they write. We look forward to unpacking the work week with friends over decadent egg dishes, syrup laden pancakes, and the requisite mimosa. We give ourselves permission to indulge in extra bacon and maybe even a second champagne cocktail as we reconnect and relax. I think you're understating things quite significantly here. But nowhere in this happy place do we picture vomit. That's what they're writing here. Yet dealing with patrons who lose their brunch, like losing your lunch but losing your brunch, is a reality for Bay Area restaurants offering the popular perk of bottomless mimosas, particularly since the pandemic, they're finding that diners, often ones in their early to mid-twenties, are drinking too much and vomiting in the bathrooms or even right there on their tables. Sure, the burden on servers and staff to clean up after these public pukers is reaching fever pitch, making it necessary for restaurants to take precautions and even implement fees. Dear all mimosa lovers, the sign says, please drink responsibly and know your limit. A $50 cleaning fee. It actually says, the sign says, a $50 cleaning fees. Because Democrats are all very severely mentally impaired. A, that A would be fee, not fees. A $50 cleaning fees will automatically include in your tip. Excuse Made nice writing here. When you throw up in the public areas. So go to the bathroom, uh, for God's sake. Thank you so much for your understanding. At Kitchen Story, a cheery Asian-inspired restaurant in Oakland's Rock Ridge. It, it, it's actually Rock Ridge, which is Mel Brooks again. It's at Rock Ridge District, uh, Oakland's Rock Ridge District. That was the name of the town in Blazing Saddles, uh, Rock Ridge. And the Rock Ridge District, known for its... Uh, Millionaire's Bacon, the bathroom uh, sports a pointed sign. Dear all mimosa lovers, please drink responsibly. No cleaning fees. They're illiterate. It's just amazing. And, uh, and across San Francisco, this has become such a problem that they're instituting fees for the vomiting Democrats because they're all expletives deleted. That's a slur of their mental capacity. What's the rage today? Losing weight is all the rage. Everybody in Rome is either in a steam room or a vomitarium. I mean, half of Rome is either cooking or puking. Hey, when you die at the palace, you really die at the palace. I'm telling you. All right, let's get to the the rabbi, uh, Rabbi Arya Lighthouse, um, in Israel this morning. 
on the Fox News Channel talking about the troglodytes on the loose trying to wipe Israel off the map. Iran is behind the effort, and Joe Biden is behind Iran, and Barack Obama is behind Iran. Barack Hussein Obama is behind Iran. And Valerie Jarrett, born in Shiraz in Iran, uh, has an awful lot to say and everything that's going on in the Obama and the Biden administrations. These are not our friends. These are not friends of the United States or of Western civilization or of civilization itself. Iran, a once great civilization, would like to have their civilization back. Unfortunately, I think the 20th, 21st century is going to be a century of prolonged warfare over culture and civilization and, of course, Islam. Rabbi Arya Lighthouse. Well, as I was just signing on to you, the siren went overhead. Uh, my very enterprising 12-year-old walked into the room saying, I know I'm not allowed to disturb you, but we got to go. And uh, she got two of my other children down to the bomb shelter. He immediately called my wife, who's out with our youngest child, and my sister, made sure that they got to a public shelter and, and, and tried to reconnect because it's important that the American people know this is a double war crime. They're firing from civilian areas. They're aimed at my children. They're aimed at us. We're American citizens, and it's, uh, it's, it's reprehensible. The 12-year-old daughter came in and said, I know I'm not allowed to disturb you, but I think we need to go to the bomb shelter. Shouldn't be happening, but cool kid. I like the kid. The troglodytes are grabbing them by the hair, beating them bloody, dragging them uh, into hell holes, and making them hostages. And uh, you know what Joe Biden was doing last night? Joe Biden at the White House was having a big party in the Rose Garden with a live band for White House staffers. And it went on and on and on and on. Joe Biden's White House party with live band last night Mm, 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 mm. And with Joe Biden's $6 billion and Barack Obama's tens of billions of dollars, Iran helped plot attack on Israel over several weeks, Hamas officials tell the Wall Street Journal. Iranian security officials helped Hamas orchestrate the weekend attack on Israel and officially approved the assault during a meeting in Beirut last Monday. Uh, according to a report from the Wall Street Journal, citing senior Hamas and Hezbollah members, the outlet reports officers of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, have worked with Hamas to plan the, to plan the air, land, and sea attack since August. The attack on Israel was one of the most deadly breaches of its borders in decades. Uh, scratch that. It looks like ever, at least in this period of time. Hundreds of civilians and soldiers were taken hostage as Hamas bombarded villages and towns near Gaza. And this is the battle for civilization. And it's unfortunate that Stonewall Jackson's words are going to have to come into play. But there's really no rehabilitating these savages Rabbi Lighthouse uh, this morning on the Fox News Channel. Just as we came down here, I mean, the enormity of the boom that happened over our head. Uh, we're not outside, so I can't see it, but I assume Iron Dome, which is a U.S. Israeli technology that literally can shoot a rocket out of the sky. How many countless thousands of lives has it protected? And, and you have to smile a little bit because uh, the good guys have the ability to win. Yeah, and the Washington Post doesn't have the story, but the headline is outrageous. Joe Biden enjoys a picnic with a live band barbecue in the Rose Garden while Hamas holds Americans hostage. Well, he'll give them $1.2 billion per hostage and continue to fund the troglodytes from hell. Rabbi Lighthouse. This is the single most amount of Jews that were slaughtered since the Holocaust. Uh, Their parades in uh, major cities throughout the Western world, including the United States of America, cheering on this barbarism. Uh, And if you can't call out that which is correct and call out that which is so obviously incorrect, how are we possibly going to win? Honestly. And what is it with, let's do number 19. The uh, Palestinians were given this waterfront real estate. The Israelis have turned it into Tel Aviv. 
Um, the Palestinians, on the other hand. The Palestinians have had free control of Gaza since 2005. They could have built Singapore. It's only an hour's drive from Tel Aviv. You've been to Tel Aviv. You see what's created in Tel Aviv. The opportunity is there. Instead, they built hell. And whatever they see today will be far worse. They could have built Singapore, been an industrial headquarters, an economic headquarters. They could have built Tel Aviv just up the beach from the hell that they built. And now I'm afraid that comeuppance is required. Democrat Senator Cory Booker was in Israel, as were a couple of other members of Congress. And when the rockets started raining in, he ran like hell and his staff got him out of the country lickety split. As Chaz Boner would say, Rabbi Shmuley, an old friend of Cory Booker, decided to go after him with an ex-post. As soon as the rockets started in Israel, my senator and dear friend Cory Booker ran for his life. Maybe it's because he voted to give Iran $150 billion. Because Cory Booker voted to give Iran $150. Then he ran away today from Israel. And he goes on in long form. Cory Booker posted a video of himself looking brave, running away and getting out of the country real quick. And his old pal from Oxford, Rabbi Shmuley, decided to remind him that he voted to fund the world's leading sponsors of radical Islamic terrorism who fund and promote Hamas and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah. And so what you ran from today, Senator, was you. You're behind the curtain. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, we don't, uh, I've got so much more to get to that I'm not going to be able to get to. And I... You know, we don't have time. Let's uh, let, let's grab Leo in Colorado. Leo, I've, I, I think you've got a quick point to make, and I hope you do, because we've only got about 30 seconds for you, but I saw you on the big board, and you should get on the air, Leo. Take it away. Thanks, Chris. Hey, um, I, I think this is going to cause a domino effect, a ripple effect across the world. Um, you know, these people are going to end up making themselves martyrs. Uh, they've probably already got the weapons. I'm, I'm talking like a nuke or a dirty bomb or both. And they're going to suck Israel in as deep as they can to the Gaza Strip. And they're going to deploy this thing. And it's going to be pure chaos across the world. Well, Nobody's I... Gonna, you know, Biden's not going to respond. China's going to go, oh, let's take Taiwan. Putin's going to say, let's, take, let's blow up that big nuke plant. You know, uh, Leo, you're you're paying attention. You're you're keeping your ear to the ground. And you know, Obama and Biden and Boltneck John Kerry allowed Iran to continue to enrich uranium and spin centrifuges. (laughs) 